and just go over the basic concepts of state plan coordinates. Okay? No. You need to know this to pass your. You have to know what we're going to talk about to pass your LS. They don't test you on the California coordinate system specifically on the LSIT, but you have to know the basic concepts of state plane coordinates to pass your LSIT. So the, the last two questions on the quiz we just took are the kind of questions you're going to get on your LSIT about state plane coordinates, okay? But we're talking about California state plane coordinates today. I want you to understand that not all state plane coordinates are the same. So there's, for example, there's a different number of zones depending on the states that you're in. And the, the, the LSIT is a national test. They could test you about, just, just not, for example, not every state plane coordinate system has, has a cone as the basis of its projection. So just be careful. I'm gonna teach you California state plane coordinates because that's what we use. But just remember when you're taking the CST or the LSIT or the national LS, those questions could be broad, more broadly applied. Does that make sense? Okay. So I highly recommend the very best information there is on state plane coordinates is actually from Caltrans, section 11 of the manual. I printed one copy. Somebody would like this copy, but it's online for free as a PDF. Just Google California, Caltrans, California state plane coordinates. Get this PDF. Keep it. It's a really, really, really good reference. Okay. All right, so we're going to go over the basics in just a few minutes. So, California has seven zones. Seven zones. They're numbered from north to south. Okay? Each zone is a cone. Okay? Montana, my home state, has one zone. It's across this whole state, okay, and they use a cylinder. So, California uses a cone, Montana uses a cylinder. Okay, and California zones are stacked north-south. Montana's is, is aligned east-west. Why is that? Which way does California run? North south. Which way does Montana run? East-west. Okay, so each system is tailored to its state. Okay, so there's seven zones, seven cones. Okay, so let's talk about the parts of the cones. The very last thing I'm going to do is show you how the math works. Okay, so. I've actually done this, I didn't have time to do it, but if you take a cone, a paper cone, and you slit it from the apex down to the base and unfold it, this is the shape you get if you laid it out flat on the table. Okay, that's called a projected cone. Just like if you take a cylinder and you slit it lengthwise and lay it out, what do you get? Rectangle. A rectangle, that's a projected cylinder. All the state plane coordinate systems are made from solids that project easily project to a flat surface. That's why they're called projections, back projections. So would you use a sphere? No. No, because no, that doesn't neatly project to a flat surface. Okay? So we use cones. This is called Lambert. I think that's named that's some really smart guy that lived a long time ago that gets some credit for some reason. Lambert conformal cone. Okay, now don't quote me on this, because I might not be right, but I believe the reason it's called conformal is because the relationship between angles do not change on a, com on a conformal projection. So if it's 35 degrees on the cone, it's close to 35 degrees on the surface of the earth. Okay? So state plane, this, this particular system does distort area. So areas on the, on the grid are not the same as areas on the surface of the earth. There's a different name for those kinds of projections. If you want a projection that preserves area, that's called equal area projections. Okay? It's kind of like state plane coordinate systems are kind of like being married. You don't get everything. Okay? You can have a sweet girl that cooks good, but she's probably not going to look like a model. Right? You can have a model, but she probably isn't going to cook and she might not be very nice. You got to take your pick. Okay, so with bat projections, you got to choose. What are you going to distort? Is it going to be length of lines, angular relationships between lines, areas? You can't have everything. Okay? Okay, so what they do is they take this cone, and they put the apex of the cone, the tip, the tip of the cone goes at a spot that sits above the North Pole. 
Okay, above the above the axis of rotation, that's why I numbered that number five. Okay. Okay. Then they take the cone. The cone cuts through the earth. Okay. So I'm going to give you a couple more important terms. When you have a projection like this that cuts through the earth, that's called a secant protection projection. Okay, secant means cut through. It cuts through. If you have a projection, if this cone laid on the on the surface and just connected to the dock, what kind of projection is that? Tangent. tangent. That's a tangent projection. We are not tangent. We are secant. The reason they make it secant is because they're trying to reduce the amount of distortion, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Secant, uh, you said it was cut through. Secant is cut through. <coughs> okay, so the spot where the cone cuts through the Earth, the ellipsoid, are called standard parallels. There's two. Okay, there's one on the north, one on the south. Okay. Then you have what's called the central meridian. That's the middle of the cone. Okay. So each zone has two standard parallels and a central meridian. Okay, where the central meridian and the standard parallels intersect is called the false, the false origin or the false grid origin. Okay, and then down here, somewhere in the lower left, you have the true grid origin. And let me explain that. This is zero, zero. Okay, when they design these systems, they don't want this to be zero, zero. Why not? <coughs> Think about it if you were in an AutoCAD. If this is zero zero, what kind of coordinates are you gonna have on this? Positive, positive. You also have negative. negative. You're gonna have you're gonna have a positive and a negative, right? So they, they give this some other number, big number, so that you don't have any negative coordinate values. Okay? So believe it or not, for some cursed reason, all of our state plane zones are laid out in metric. So this has some met, nice even metric value. It's like five hundred thousand, five hundred thousand or something. I can't remember. Okay? But we don't work in meters, we work in feet. So as a general rule, this zone has a false northing and easting of 2 million in the northing and 6 million in the easting. When you convert to feet, that's what you get. Okay, so here's a really helpful rule of thumb for you CAD users. How can you tell if you're in state plane coordinates? More than likely. You go at Two by six. That's how you know. Okay. So that's how far, this number is how far the false grid origin is from the true grid origin. Why don't we uh, okay. use um, state plane? We do. Or sorry. Um, okay, so like like right now, like how we're working on a job, uh, that one's like, what was it? What, which was that? Moffitt's like 6,000, or 6 million, 10 million? No, or Moffitt's or? state plane. Well, Oh, okay. Yep. So, okay, so it's six two. Most of the time we're in state plane. Okay, now let's talk real quick about because I want to take keep you guys too long. Let's talk about grid versus ground. So, do you guys understand how if you got two points here, so point A and point B, and you project that up to the Earth's surface and you measure this distance, this curved distance, so we've got a straight distance on the cone and we've got a curved distance on the surface of the Earth. Which one of those two distances is longer? The curve. The curved distance. So, if you're in between the standard parallels, which we almost always are, ground distances are always longer than grid because the ground distances are measured on the curve. Grid distances are always smaller. Now, the scale factor gets you from one to the other, and those are usually very small. So, when we're going from ground to grid, you usually have a zero, a decimal point, and then four nines. Okay, what that means is you have to go how far before you see a hundredth? A thousand feet. Got to go a thousand feet before you see a hundredth in the difference, okay? Because the Earth is really big. Okay. Now, if you get outside the standard parallels, it's the opposite. Now this length is longer than the curve, so your scale factor reverses. That almost never, ever, ever happens because if you're on the other side of a standard parallel, you're in the wrong zone. You need to go up a zone or down a zone, right? The zones are laid out so that the standard parallels touch. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, what zone is Lathrop in? Zone three. Zone three. Almost all our work is in zone three. Okay, occasionally if you go to the north side of the bay, you'll bump into zone two, <coughs> Sacramento zone two. Fresno is in my half. Fresno half. zone four. Is so if you're in between bay? Sacramento and Fresno County, you're zone three. What about, uh, what is it, Merced? Merced zone three. Is Half Moon Bay in like zone two, I think? 
Nope, mm -hmm. that's zone three. Zone three. So like Santa Rosa zone two, I think. Okay. The two million and six million mm -hmm. is that zone three only, or every one of them starts over? At I think. A uh, I don't know for sure, Jesse. I think this number is the same on every zone, but I don't know for sure. I think a general yeah. rule is if you're in the millions with coordinates, it's probably safe to assume. Sometimes it's sometimes this number. This is always six every time I've seen it. Sometimes this goes to like one point eight million. Uh, but it, it, you know, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I'm surprised I remembered this off the top of my head. But yeah, good question. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the math real quick. So I want you to remember this rule. You cannot get a state plane coordinate without a latitude longitude to start. You have to have a latitude and longitude to get a state plane coordinate. Okay. So that means you either got to use GPS or if you're using a total station, you have to tie into a monument that has a known latitude longitude on it. Actually, two. You need two monuments. Okay. And I'm going to explain why. I see Jeremy's got a puzzled look on his face. So we're not going to do longhand state plane calcs. Okay. When I took the LS and it was still SA format, every LS exam had a long form state plane coordinate calc. They gave you a lot long and you had to calculate the northern easting or vice versa. It was a nightmare. It like took 45 minutes and it was a bunch of math and if you made one mistake, you got hosed. And I'm dyslexic, so you know how that worked out for me. I did that problem last. Okay? They finally changed that. I don't think they make you do that anymore and it's a good idea because if I caught any of you doing state plane coordinates by hand, I would fire you. Okay? Number one, why would I have a human do what a computer can? Right? Computer's gonna be a lot faster, and computers don't make mistakes if the if the program software is written properly. So they finally stopped doing that. I think I might have been the last year, or the year before the last year that they had those those problems on there. Okay, so we're not gonna do that because it's a nightmare. I'm just gonna walk you through the concept. Okay, if we know what this what this latitude is, so like it's I think for our zone in zone three it's 121, I think. Okay. And we know this latitude over here is one, I don't remember which way it goes. So let's, I think it's 122. Okay, what's this angle? 123. Nope. This lat, this lat, that's okay. This latitude is 122, this latitude is 121. What's this angle at the top? One. One degree. Oh. Okay, so if you know the two longitudes, you know that angle of that triangle is one degree. Okay, now, if you know this latitude, and you know this latitude, there's something you can look up in a table that gives you this distance right here. Okay? Now, they, they, you have to use a table because the Earth is an ellipse. It's an ellipsoid, right? So you got to use a table. If, it was, if the Earth was round and it wasn't squished, you could use a, a formula for a circle, but you can't. Okay, so there's a table. You look it up. If I have this angle and I have this distance and I've got a right triangle here, now what can I do? Calculate change in easting, change in northing here, change in easting here, right? I know what this distance is by definition, okay? So I know they give me the value of this northing easting here at the top of the cone. So I take the, the northing at the top of the cone, I uh, minus the northing, change in northing. I take the easting of the central parallel, I minus the easting, and what do I get? Get the northing easting at this point, okay? So. Let's just review. We got we got a point with a latitude longitude. Lat long. Okay? I take my longitude, I minus the longitude of the a central meridian, and what does that give me? Which piece of the problem? Uh, one. Angle number one. Now I have this angle. Okay? I take my latitude of my point and my latitude of my apex. I consult the table, and I now have what? The latitude. This distance. Or the distance. Distance in feet. Okay? Does everybody see now we have a right triangle problem? It's the simplest kind of problem surveyors can solve, right? Except for leveling. It's just a right triangle trick problem. So you plug in the whatever it is, cosine or sine and tangent, and you get these two values in feet. Okay? Subtract from your northing at the top, and you get that value. If you don't understand what I just did, you you need to, and you want to take your LSAT, you get, you got to figure that out. You know, I, you guys aren't going to be asked to do the math, but you have to understand the conceptuals. Like you ought to be able to write yourself a little recipe, 
right, of the steps. Okay, because I could write I could write questions about these concepts without having you have to do the math, and you, that's what they're going to do. You at least want to know the vocab. Yeah, you want to know the name, right? If somebody says, somebody's going to say, you've got a point in between the standard parallels. Is your scale factor, what is your scale factor? And they're going to give you four values, and only one of them is going to be less than one. The other three are going to be above one. And you got to you got to know enough to know, hey, if I'm between the standard parallels, what's my scale factor, ground to grid? Greater than one or less than one? Less than, less than one. Less than one. You got to know that and pick the right answer. You don't have to do any math. You're going to see it. It's right there. That's you're testing conceptual knowledge here, which is what they should do. Okay. Okay. So just remember a couple key things. Ground is always longer than grid in California if you're between the standard parallels, which you should be. And if you want to be on, if you want to put your state plane, if you want to put your survey on state plane coordinates, what do you have to have? Your uh, latitude, latitude, and long. Latitude. latitude and longitude value for at least two of the points in your survey. Okay, and to get a lot long, you either got to get out your GPS or you got to tie into some some geodetic monuments with your total station, which we never do anymore. They used to do that. We don't do that anymore. Now we use GPS. Okay, so if you send if you send Randy out to do a, a survey with his total station and he doesn't have the GPS, can we put it on state plane? No. No. Now, why do I personally like things on state plane? It goes back to the question that everybody got wrong about the GIS. purpose of state plane. Yeah, because if it's on state plane, what can you do in a couple clicks? Put it on a map. You can drop it on an aerial photo. Super easy, right? That's why we like state plane. Okay? All right. We covered a lot. But that's a good, good high-level review. Okay? What was, the, what was the question you asked? So... Okay, so if you have a point in between the standard <laughs> parallels, mm -hmm. point okay. standard parallels, is the scale factor at that point going to be greater than one or less than one? Less than one. Going to be less than one if you're in between the standard par parallels in California. Okay. That's because your ground distance is larger. It's than on the curve. Yeah. yeah, it's on the curve, and the grid distance is flat. Shortest distance between any two points. Straight line. Straight line. It's a straight line. I know that one. Yeah. All right, good job. Next week, we'll talk about records of survey. Ooh, fun. Uh, there's the button on the back. Yep.